Hi there, let's look at a theory of comparative advantage as it relates to trade between two countries mentioned in Extract 1, Malawi and Australia. So Malawi is a country with a high level of primary product dependency. Nearly half of their exports of goods are raw tobacco and they also export products such as raw sugar, tea and raw cotton. Indeed, less than 10% of their goods exports are manufactured products. So how could a country such as Malawi, a low income country, with a low level of economic complexity, how could it benefit from specialisation and trade with a country such as Australia? Well, let's take a look at an example. It's a hypothetical example using PPF analysis. We can see here that if we take two products, beef and tobacco, Australia has an absolute advantage in both. Malawi's PPF lies within Australia's PPF. But notice the difference in the gradient of the two lines. And this is key to understanding comparative advantage. With half of resources allocated to both goods, Australia and Malawi could produce 350 units of beef in total, Australia 250, Malawi 100, and they could also produce 250 units of tobacco, Australia 200, Malawi 150. Malawi looks to be relatively better at producing tobacco, and we find this if we think about opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost ratio for a beef and tobacco, in other words, how many units of beef you give up when you make more tobacco, is 5 to 4 for Australia, but only 10 to 15 for Malawi. So for Australia, the comparative advantage is actually producing beef. Because if they produce an extra unit of beef, they give up four-fifths of a unit of tobacco, whereas for Malawi, they give up one and a half units. Malawi has a comparative advantage, obviously, in tobacco. The opportunity cost of producing more tobacco is two-thirds of a unit of beef for Malawi, whereas for Australia, it's 5 over 4. So therefore, there's a difference in opportunity cost. Malawi has an advantage in tobacco, Australia in beef. Both should specialise. And we find, if we assume constant returns to scale, that if both countries specialise, they can increase the total output of both goods. Malawi fully specialises and produces 300 units of tobacco. Australia part specialises, sacrifices 120 units of tobacco to pick up 150 units of beef. So total output of beef goes up to 400, total output of tobacco rises to 380. We then need to think about trade. And for trade to be beneficial, the terms of trade must lie within the opportunity cost ratios. So it must lie somewhere between 5 over 4 and 10 over 15. Well, 1 to 1 lies between those two ratios. And if we trade at a mutually beneficial terms of trade of 1 for 1, Australia, if we go back, Australia sacrifices or exports 130 units of beef to Malawi, and that means they go down to 270. Therefore, Malawi goes up from 0 to 130. And there's a 130 swap in tobacco. So Malawi gives up 130 units of tobacco. Australia had 80, add 130, and they go up to 210. So comparing before specialisation and after trade, we find that in both beef and tobacco, both countries end up with more of both product. In other words, there are gains from specialisation and exchange based on the law of comparative advantage. We can develop the analysis slightly further by thinking about how the PPF would, would change and shift if we trade at one for one. Australia, for example, if it produced 500 units of beef, could in theory export that and trade for 500 units of tobacco. Of course, the reality is it wouldn't, but at least the PPF can shift out at one for one. Malawi, likewise, has 300 units of tobacco and in theory could export those for 300 units of beef, perhaps from Australia or other countries. In other words, trade based on mutually beneficial terms of exchange can cause an outward shift of a country's production possibility frontier. And this is a key important advantage or consequence of trade between nations. Now, of course, the key is to understand some of the assumptions behind the model. We're assuming constant returns to scale, there might be diminishing returns, or the gains from trade might be even bigger if there are increasing returns to scale, in other words, economies of scale. We're assuming that labour resources and other resources are mobile between industries. So, for example, there's no risk of structural unemployment. Of course, that may not be the case. We're ignoring some of the possible externalities from trade. They can be both positive and negative. It's also worth mem remembering that mutually beneficial terms of trade, in our case one for one, is not necessarily the same as the terms of trade which benefits both countries equally. In our example, for example, Malawi would get most of the benefits of trade at one for one. 
And keep in mind that what we've been through in the last five or six minutes is a two country, two product model. The real world is much more complex, much more messy. Indeed, in a world of global supply chains, such as the iPhone, many products are assembled from inputs drawn from tens of different countries. So the two country, two product model has some limitations, but it's still important in terms of understanding the gains from trade.